creating WP data tables based on serialized PHP arrays. This input source is maybe the most flexible one and uh, it's very customizable and this is maybe very useful for these ones of you that uh, have some knowledge of PHP development. As you probably know, arrays the very flexible and very convenient data structure uh, which is used in PHP all the time and serialized array as php.net says is a storable representation of a value of an array in our case so basically uh, this serialized array is a stream a plain representation of an array which can later be unserialized and we can get an array out of it whenever we need. Uh, I will not stop in deeper detail on how arrays work in PHP uh, because there is quite a lot of tutorials and video tutorials about this on the web. Also, this is not a PHP development course, but a course of tutorials on creating tables in WordPress. So I will show uh, an example of how we use native WordPress WP query to fetch uh, posts and pages and then how, how to create a WP data table based on that. So you can also consider these as a small uh, example of integrating with WordPress because um, a lot of people need this. We do a lot of customizations on this and maybe if you see how it's done, you, you will be able to do this yourself. Uh, WP query is a native, uh, native WordPress way of fetching different posts or pages of any post types and you can define many parameters of uh, WP query to for example sort them in a specific way or fetch only the ones that have some custom meta values defined etc. You can go to WordPress codex to see how it works. Uh, in our case I prepared a small PHP file Let's go through it and I will explain you how it works. This is a standalone PHP file, so we can call it uh, by URL from whatever place on the web. First thing is we, uh, that we need to do is to include the WordPress engine. It's done by including the WP blog header PHP file. Uh, it means that uh, this standalone PHP file can use WordPress functions and it's connecting to the database that WordPress is configured to use and of course when we do this uh, when we include this file we are able to use the WP query and that's what we do in the next row so we add a variable called the query and then we assign to this variable a new object of WP query class and then we pass to the constructor of this WP query class an array of parameters uh, as I mentioned you can uh, see the full list and the full documentation of WP query on this address on the WordPress codex what we are doing here is we are querying only the pages so the post type must be equal to page then we are querying pages that are children children of a defined ID. So you know that WordPress has these parent-child relationships between posts and pages. So we want the pages that have this post ID as their parent post ID. And then we are setting post count to minus one. By default, uh, the WP query will return five posts and this parameter can redefine this and mi minus one means that there is no limit so we return all of them uh, okay then when this is uh, executed uh, the query variable will contain a, a, an object of the WP query class and then we can use it method, methods to to return uh, to prepare an array what we are going to do. So we are initializing an empty array called return array uh, 
and then we are going in a loop so this is a method which returns uh, if the query has more posts that haven't been browsed through yet so until while this is true we are doing this loop when there are no more posts it will exit this loop so we are fetching the post and then we are filling a new entry in the return array so we are adding a new value to this empty array and we are adding a value which contains the ID the title and then content preview with link for ID we use the get the ID method for the title we use get the title method and for content preview with link we uh, use maybe a little bit complicated structure so we get of the content then we get only 200 of the contents uh, characters then we strip short codes because we don't want to see the short codes in our uh, table and then also we strip all HTML tags just in case uh, then we add the three dots and additionally we add the uh, link to the post these two sticks stand for formatting of the URL columns there is a separate uh, video tutorial on how do you add the URL columns in WP data tables so basically it should be first the URL then two sticks and everything after two sticks will be displayed as text so each value of this array is going to be also an array with these three values ID title and content preview link so when this loop is done we, we have a filled in array which can be used in the table and what we need to do is to serialize it and to output using an echo so let's see how this looks in the browser so I'll open that uh, com uh, slash sample files slash show documentation.php so you see this is a string of the serialized PHP array. What we need to do now is to go to the WordPress dashboard and create a WP data table. So we just open the dashboard, our WP admin panel. Here we go WP data tables add from data source. We need to copy this URL here and let's say PHP serialized sorry serialized array example uh, the table type is serialized php array we are pasting the url that we just copied and then we just need to click save when we do this, PHP, uh, WP data tables connects to this URL, fetches the string, tries to unserialize it, uh, checks if this is a valid array that can be used in WP data tables, and if everything is fine, it initializes the columns, which happens in our, uh, in our case. So now we just need to tell WP data tables that this third column is a URL link, and save it again. And when it's saved, we can click on preview to see how the table will look on the front end. Okay, it parsed ID as a float, and actually, we even don't need ID here, so let's hide this column. Let's save again. Okay, so. Uh, this actually fetches the uh, pages which belong to our documentation on our website so this is connecting to a WordPress database fetching the 
posts and returns it in the form of array, which we later render as a table. So uh, that's it. Uh, now it's up to you. You can add any complicated logic here. You can add more attributes, more parameters to the WP query. You can add more logic here. You can connect to remote sites. You can connect to XML, MySQL, etc. So in the end, you just need to serialize the array and paste the URL of this file and then WP the tables can create the table. So we just now need to insert it in the poster page. For this, we can create a new poster page. Let's call it PHP serialized array example. And here we can place uh, the uh, cursor where we want the table to be. Find this button, insert the WP data table, click it and here locate the table that we just created php serialized array example okay and publish it's same for posts and pages or maybe different post types that you have registered wherever the short code can codes can be par parsed you can use this so just click on the view page to see how it looks in the front end and you can see so there are post titles and previews with links we can click it and we will open the actual documentation page that's it thanks for watching and see you next tutorials purchase wp data tables exclusively on code canyon